whole corporate model is built upon growth and expansion. Let's take first the retail sector. They get their money and their stock, uh, uh, people to buy stock in them by the amount of new stores they're building each year, their expansion. Now they're in decline. It's not as though these are brilliant managers and in increasing in-store sales. That's not happening. You're saying we've got to switch to innovation, not just uh, growth and expansion. Exactly, and they don't know how to do that. As you to we were talking earlier, why you know I get frustrated working with large corporations. The innovation is not part of their DNA. Or else if they were, they wouldn't be them. You know, all they know how to do how to do is make money. That doesn't make you smart. It makes you shrewd. You know, so there are very different things here. So this is going to be a great opportunity. Something old and ugly is dying that deserves to die. Now let's take it to the other level, agriculture. The agricultural model is built upon producing masses amounts of product and then shipping it far distances. Guess what? Can't do that anymore. This is a great time for local. Local communities buy local. If the people want to thrive and survive in these times, they have to put their focus locally. Support everything you can locally. Don't buy a thing that comes that you don't have to. And only and only and by the way, people ask me, you know, what what should I do? I go, first thing you do is call up whatever town you're living in and tell them to shut the damn lights off that are lighting up all these municipal buildings. It costs money. You know, my father, he was seven of us, and I grew up in the Bronx, and, and uh, may his soul rest in peace, he used to say to us, shut the, shut the lights off. What do you think I have, a pull with Edison? <laughs> shut the lights off. Stop. I don't want to pay for this stupidity. So this is where we're going, and then we're going to start seeing the tax revolts. You can't raise taxes when people are out of work and their, and their incomes are declining. Who do these people think they are? Well, what are? you said is, uh, I mean, earlier is, is, is happening already. Bush tripled the size of government. Obama's promising to expand it even more. And they're hiring more cops, more bureaucrats, more, 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 and we just don't have it. What is it you don't understand? Exactly. So then they're going to understand the same way they did with the French Revolution. We're going to have a revolution. By the way, in our future forecast, we can see the country splitting up into either regions or separate states pulling out. Because this country, and again, this is, and this, you could go back to our Trends Journal. It, it was the fall edition 2002. The headline read, Empire America Fading Fast. We're going the way of the former Soviet Union. We're going to see this country break up. I mean, for anybody to think that these people in Washington are intelligent, more intelligent than they are, or they have the answers, you know, what... Are, what well, Mr. Salente, a lot of them are. You know, uh, people worth billions of dollars that I know that lived in Austin that I've met personally, they have fled the country in the last three years, and, 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 and they're, you know, inside info, and I was saying this three years ago, the United States, quote, won't be here economically, and that's the term you're using, is a post-industrial, a post-first world nation. Yeah, and I, we call it an underdeveloping nation. And they're going to do the things that they do in other underdeveloping nations, for example, like in Argentina, when the currency busts out. You can't get your money out of the bank. And they'll, they'll do a fake flag thing, you know. They'll blame something else for the problem. I mean, I love this Obama and his speech, you know, how, you know, yes, we can. We don't count. If they were listening to the Wees, the Wees don't want the General Motors bailout, and the Wees didn't want the $700 well, let's stop right there. bailout. Let's stop right there. Uh, you talk about a false flag, uh, what, some type of staged event or group of staged events to keep the slaves rallied around the bankers while they slit our throats? You got it. You know, look, I, there's nothing that, I, there's nothing that I, they say that I believe. Read my lips, no new taxes. I didn't have sex with that woman, Monica Lewinsky. I smoked, but I didn't inhale. I'm no crook. Uh, well, you know, this is, Saddam Hussein has weapons of mass destruction and ties to al-Qaeda. What, am I a kid? I'm going to believe these people? Well, it just came out again that... Um, every TV station that Congress looked at is broadcasting fake news. They were paid to lie. Uh, and, you know, one example is every year before school, you see the same newscast on every channel, same words. And I knew it was paid for then, but now they admit it, and they say it's the law to take vaccines. There is no law. I mean, that's how bankrupt and evil and corrupt, and they aren't going to stop. Now, now, 
you know, I got so many callers I want to talk to you. This is such a hot interview. Is there any way to keep you, and if you can't, we'll just have you back up in a few weeks, for 15 minutes into the next hour? Sure, I'll do another 15. Okay, yeah, I mean, 15 after this, so that gives us about a total of, uh, you'll be gone at 15 after next hour, so that gives us another, you know, 30 minutes or 25 minutes or so, because I want to go to callers when we come back, uh, but, but. What about pension funds? You talk about Argentina. You talk about other countries. They are now saying, hey, we want to take over the pension funds, the 401Ks, to, quote, keep them safe. Your take on that. Again, you know, as I said, you could call it you could call it communist, fascist, or socialist, but you can't call it democracy or free market. They will do anything. And so, yeah, I, I don't put that past them. Well, Congress just had hearings last week saying they're looking at it, taxing them, taking part of them. They're going to take your private 401K, and then the Social Security Administration is going to send you a check. Uh, I mean, what are the, uh, so you're saying you really think they're delusional in government, and they just think we're going to go along with this. Well, yeah. I mean, again, you know, look at who these people are. I love it that they're saying, you know, now that, you know, the Democrats are in power over here, you know, now that we'll be able to get something done. I mean, who's going to get what done? Pelosi, Reed, Dodd, Frank? How about Laurel and Hardy and Abbott and Costello? What have these people have ever done? Who could get away with this stuff? Except steal. Except steal. Why do you, you know, think? Yeah, and, and, and make bad decisions. Why? I mean, who could? None of us would be employed if we screwed up as much as they did. So, I mean, you know, there's, yesterday Obama, you know, they broadcast that thing on 60 Minutes, and, you know, about the economy. And he said they'll do whatever it takes. Or well, what's whatever? Well, that means nationalizing industries, stealing everything the middle class has got. Folks, they're going to point the poor, uneducated people at the middle class. They're going to rob the middle class. And uh, they're planning on all of this. We'll talk more about it on the other side and take your phone calls with our amazing guest, Gerald Salenti. His website's crinsresearch.com. Ours is infowars.com. Okay, we're going to go to... Uh, Steve, Tyler, Mike, Casey, Aaron, and others, please have your question ready for myself or the guest, Gerald Salente, one of the top uh, trim forecasters in the world. But, I mean, that last question, we, we're here marveling at this. Uh, they have, uh, you, you know, increased the police force six, seven-fold the last 15 years. They have prepared this MIT surveillance grid, the cameras, the license plate reading systems, they say they're getting ready for revolts. They're moving NORTHCOM brigades in, saying we're under military occupation. So the government at the top does know it's going to be unpopular and that the raping uh, of the middle class is going to be unpopular, but they're going to use the poor, dumbed-down, you know, who means well, middle, uh, you know, middle-lower class or whatever, and the blue-collar folks to kind of sick them on the middle class is what I'm seeing. I see that class warfare uh, being set up. Uh, what do you see, Gerald Salente? They're going to try that, but it's not going to work because, you know, they're going to be very angry at all levels of society because there's not going to be any money out there. The government's going to become the common enemy. And a matter of fact, we see the Republicans and the Democrats working together very closely, you know, to defeat the common enemy, which is going to be the common man. And that's what we, we see the battle shaping up in the coming years. That's right. That's why we see such incredible integration of both parties, because they work for the very same interest. Exactly. They both work for the Wall Street mob. You just have different divisions. You have the, uh, you have the uh, Goldman Sachs group over in D.C. You have the J.P. Morgan the mob over in, um, in uh, uh, New York. You know, it's just different, you know, members of the crime family. You've got Gambino and the Genovese. So, so in closing, before we go to call, sir, uh, you know, basic trends. Uh, 2009 starts accelerating uh, more and more layoffs, more uh, confidence lost. You talk about total implosion by 2012. What will it look like? Crime is going to be rampant, and um, it's it's going to it's going to be. It's it's going to be also a time, and I, and I really want to make this because there's a positive end of this because something old and ugly is dying, and something new could be born. This is going to be this could be the time for a renaissance. It doesn't have to end ugly. 
Because one thing America has, and I travel the world, I mean, you know, people still look to America for the place of innovation. They don't know how bad it is over here. You know, they don't know how everybody's become so corporatized. But the, the, thing, the thing is that we have more than any other nation the ability to turn this around and turn it into a positive. And the way it becomes a positive is if we break away from one size rules all. So if we start going back to states' rights, to to local rights, and, and then also, Alex, necessity is the mother of invention. Great things could happen from this. No, I agree. We're stagnant. We're decadent. We're dying. This is like getting a fever that burns out the infection. But, so, so that's the big challenge. Do we let the globalists, the New World Order, use the crisis to sell total control, or do we do a judo move and use this attack against them to fully discredit them and have a true renaissance. Precisely. And that's, by the way, the foundation of the work at the Trends Research Institute. We provide the trends. We, we, provide, the, we, we provide the lifeboats.